Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do a currently reading video slash Friday reads because it is Friday today um, and also show you some of the books that I got from the library today. Uh, so I am kind of reading quite a few books at the same time and I don't uh, I sort of had it in my mind, in the back of my mind, to uh, only read one book at a time in 20, 2019. It's 2019 now. Um, and obviously that didn't happen and I think I just have to sort of come to terms with the fact that I like to read several books at the same time. Um, in this stage of my life, I just I find it very difficult to st just stay with one book at a time. Uh, but that is uh, side ramblings. So let's start talking about the books that I am currently reading. Uh, so first up, the book that I'm currently reading for my Salinger January is Franny and Zoe. Uh, so this is a reread for me. This uh, the only book of Salinger's that I haven't read is Race High. The Roof Beams Carpenters and Seymour an Introduction, uh, which is the last of his books to be published. So this is the third one. Um, and when I first read this book, I, uh, I liked aspects of it, but I was kind of felt, um, I was kind of left with a slight disappointment, uh, or at least the, the feeling I remember uh, was a slight disappointment in it, um, not really getting enough out of it. Uh, and I will say that my rereading so far has turned out to be very uh, enjoyable and giving me much more out of this book. So the uh, the book itself is two stories. The Franny story is around 35, 37, uh, something uh, pages long. So it's a short story and then uh, Zoe or Zoe is um, around 100 pages long. So it's a very d big difference in the length of the stories. Um, and I loved Franny upon a rereading and I think I actually did really enjoy it the first time. Um, but I just didn't remember because uh, Zoe, the other story, uh, which is more like a novella really, um, bogged me down quite a bit. But I will say, um, I think uh, knowing about the class family and all of the connections helps in figuring out the uh, the characters and the reasons they are important from the beginning, uh, from the get-go, and that probably is why I'm enjoying it much, much more uh, this time. Uh, so I think, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I'm definitely gaining a lot more from it, uh, this rereading. And I, I'm hoping that I can sort of uh, spend mo much more time with this during the weekend because this week has been slightly busy uh, so I haven't really had the time or um, energy to really dedicate to this book because I feel like when I'm reading Silent Jar I really want to be present uh, and it, it requires much more active uh, reading for me. So I'm hoping that I can do this, uh, read this during the weekend and really spend some time uh, with Salinger. I, I love his writing uh, and reading all of his books uh, in a row has been really enjoyable for me. So that is the, the third in my Salinger January. Uh, alongside my Salinger reading, I have also picked up J.D. Salinger, A Life by Kenneth. Slavinsky and this is a biography of J.D. Salinger that came out a few years ago I think 2011 and this author has run a website about Salinger for uh, a long time I'm just gonna check the the date of this 2010 um, and uh, the the author uh, spent I think eight years preparing for this biography so it was definitely um, a project fueled by enthusiasm for his writing and you can tell uh, this um, in the biography uh, which makes it very enjoyable to read. It feels kind of strange to read a biography of a person like J.D. Salinger who um, valued his privacy so highly uh, and really was a recluse. Uh, so I wanted to find a biography that sort of gave me some background on him without being too gossipy and this book so far has definitely been that. It gives you the context of J.D. Salinger's writing career uh, and and the things I've read so far is just uh, sort of his uh, work prior to writing uh, The Catcher in the Rye and uh, being kind of um, 
disappointed in all of the failed uh, stories that didn't end up getting anywhere um, and sort of uh, the, the hard time he had in just getting going with his career uh, as a writer. So I'm finding it very useful in giving me context of his writing, um, a very interesting story and really well told. A book that I'm still reading since December is The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien and this is um, I, I picked this up in December with uh, Yamini from The Skeptical Reader and Mary from Books and Pizza. Uh, we were planning to buddy read this together, it didn't really work out completely. Uh, we had very different reading paces, um, but we are planning to continue on with a third book in the trilogy in February. And so I wanted to, I, I obviously want to finish this up before the end of the month. Since sort of the beginning of the year, I've been prioritizing the Salinger reading mostly. Uh, so I'm trying to, um, to pick this, uh, to put this higher up in my pile um, in the coming days. Uh, and I, I'm considering moving on to the audiobook just to have it, um, uh, while I'm knitting, for example. Um, but yeah, the, the, the Two Towers is a bit slower because uh, my favorite characters are the Hobbits and it takes quite a long time until you get there to them. Uh, so that is probably why it's taking me um, a longer time to really get stuck into this book. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm planning to read, uh, to get a bit of this done this weekend and hopefully finish it before the end of the month so I can move on to The Return of the King with Mary and Yamini. And the last one that I'm currently reading is The Toy Makers by Robert Dinsdale. Uh, this is a historical fiction novel set in 1907 uh, in London and it is has some fantasy elements to it definitely. But it's basically about a young girl who is uh, 16 years old. She's pregnant. Her family wants to send her away to sort of deal with her problem because it's very scandalous for her to be pregnant so young. Uh, so she ends up um, running away from her family and finds this um, advertisement for a job in a toy store. Uh, so she starts working in the toy store but it turns out that these toys are very magical, uh, hence the, the fanta fantasy element to it. Um, but it's about her relationship with the two brothers who work in the toy store and, and the, the brothers or the sons of um, the chief of the, the toy store. Uh, it's very um, fantastical and really imaginative in the um, the actual toys and um, there's so many different elements to this that f makes me think a lot of people would really enjoy it. The way it's described at the, in the back is if there were a toy shop in the on Diagon Alley, it would be the Toy Makers, which is actually a really good uh, s summary of the tone and feel of this um, this place, the setting of this book. Uh, it took me quite a while to really get stuck into the characters. I feel like I, I, while I appreciated all of the details in the book, I didn't feel very emotionally connected or uh, invested in the story. Um, but I feel like I'm starting to get there now, so um, I will probably be picking this up quite a bit in the next coming days because I feel like I'm just now starting to get um, sort of itching to pick it up again. I bought this very recently and started reading it quite soon afterwards which I'm happy about. I feel like in general I would like, uh, I don't really have a big um, purchase or book buying uh, plans for this year uh, but in general I definitely want to keep the time in between buying and reading um, make that time uh, less uh, and make it a stronger connection. That is something that I'm sort of trying to have in the back of my mind this year. Uh, again, another side note, um, but yeah, that is something I'm trying to do better this year. Uh, a book that I'm planning to start reading this weekend is called Mother is a Verb, an Unconventional History by Sarah Knott. Uh, this is a nonfiction book about motherhood and what is um, sort of, I, th I think in, um, in part it is sort of a historical account of motherhood and uh, what it's like to be a mother in, in, in looking at uh, the social and cultural history of that, uh, but also uh, sort of partly a personal memoir uh, of the author 
after uh, becoming pregnant and all of the the emotional response and and process of that I think um, it is a book that comes out in April and I got in a galley for it which I'm really excited about so yeah so it, it is uh, I think I've mentioned uh, a few times that uh, motherhood as a theme in writing is something that I'm really interested in and I've uh, been reading some books on this topic uh, in the last year or so and I feel like I'm constantly drawn to it and, and maybe the reason for that is in general I find um, parent and uh, child relationships and family dynamics really interesting and have always found those interesting um, but I think the, the motherhood thing is probably because I, I know a lot of people who have recently become mothers uh, so I think it's uh, constantly sort of in, in, uh, in my mind, on my mind. Uh, so uh, that is probably the reason that I'm so drawn to it uh, in the last year. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to start reading this book uh, in the weekend and I feel like it also connects very uh, nicely with The Toymakers uh, because as I, as I said, it is about a woman who, has, uh, who is pregnant at the beginning of the book and uh, has her baby at, uh, at the point that I'm at. She has just had her baby. I thought that I would show you the books that I got from the library today. Uh, I got three books for uh, a video that I'm planning actually to do uh, later in the month or in the beginning of next month. Uh, so first is Pool by Yi Hyun Lee. Uh, this is a silent picture book. Um, and obviously has something to do with swimming, which is the theme, if uh, you won't be able to tell with the next ones. Uh, the next one is um, Swimming Studies by Leanne Shapton, and this is a book about f uh, swimming in the non-fiction form. Uh, the back says, as a teenager, Leanne Shapton uh, trained for the Olympic swimming team trials. Now an artist, she's still drawn inexorably to swimming. So yeah, a book about uh, swimming in the nonfiction form and uh, the li the Lido, the Lido, by Libby Page, which is a fiction book uh, with a th central theme of swimming, as you can probably tell from the cover. Uh, so the reason I got these three books is because I am planning to read them uh, for my um, nonfiction challenge. Uh, I, I made um, a full video talking about my 2019 nonfiction reading challenge uh, linked in the description and in the cards. Um, but one of the challenges I made was to read a book about sports or food uh, and I am planning to read obviously about sports and specifically swimming because for some reason I find swimming really interesting to read about, uh, even though I don't actually enjoy swimming myself. Um, I read one book about it last year and I feel like since then I've been drawn to the topic very strongly. Um, so I sort of had it in my mind to read another book about swimming and I thought that I would combine it with some other books. So. These I will read and I will report back in a, a separate video for that. Um, I also got three other books that uh, are all um, sort of in the same vein uh, and they are poetry collections. So I don't know much about these, I just picked them up uh, based on the, the feel for the, the poetry in the book. Uh, so uh, the first one is Keeping Mum by Gwyneth Lewis uh, and I know absolutely nothing about this. I just uh, was drawn to um, to the uh, title and the cover, and then read a, a selection of it and enjoyed the style. It is a psychiatric detective story which explores the effect of a dying language on its speakers and looks at how abuses of language might lead to mental illness. Uh, obviously, language is something I find really interesting, so that's probably why I was drawn to it, and. Um, the other one I have heard about, and it is Venus as a Beer by Vani Cabildeo. Cabildeo. Uh, I've heard about this one through Jen Campbell's videos about poetry. She does a lot of uh, poetry videos, and I always try to keep attention, uh, to keep attention? Uh, to pay attention to the poetry collections she, she recommends, because she's definitely uh, really uh, well versed. Well well versed in poetry and uh, I feel like I still don't quite know my taste in poetry. I haven't really found a lot of uh, poets that I enjoy uh, so I'm still sort of exploring this genre um, but I thought that I would um, 
picked this up because I remember hearing her talk about it and uh, again I enjoyed the the writing style in it and the last poetry collection I uh, got was Life on Mars by Tracy K. Smith and the main reason partly uh, Jen has talked about this one and I think she mentioned this in her um, favorite books videos of the last like 10 years or something but also Tracy K. Smith has recently published or is going to be publishing uh, another uh, poetry collection and I read samples from the new one um, and loved her style so I was planning to to look for Tracy K. Smith's uh, previous collections in the library uh, and this was the one that the library had so um, I got this basically basically because of um, wanting to explore this writer's uh, poetry in general and this was the title that I had access to. Uh, so I really want to get into poetry and I don't really know what I'm looking for but I really like poetry that has a nice melody to it. I like rhyme but not too uh, obsessive rhyme if that makes sense so if you have any recommendations of poetry collections you love please let me know in the comments I'm as I said I'm kind of going blind here because I haven't really read that much poetry in general and not much poetry that I've absolutely loved so if you have any poetry recommendations please let me know uh, and let me know if you've read any of these books or what you thought of them I would love to hear about it um, or if you're reading something really good this weekend I would also love to hear about that I I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon. Bye!